Hi, Steve Livingston here. It's the 11th of April, 2023. We have changes that have now come in for the Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme, SEAS for short. So I want to run through some practical issues that have arisen uh, since its introduction, since the changes that have come into effect this month. So I think it's worth going through the changes very briefly. So with effect from the 6th of April, 2023, a startup can now raise up to £250,000 in total under SAS. It was previously £150,000 up until April 2023. Investors, the business angels, can invest uh, £200,000 per tax year. It was previously £100,000. That's doubled. Great news. Uh, the trading age of companies, the startups, uh, to be able to uh, raise money under SAS is going up from two years to three years. So that's the date from trading starting, not date from corporation. That's commonly confused. Um, and also the gross assets test uh, in, ter in terms of the total asset valuation on the company balance sheet at the time the shares are issued is going up from its, its previous £200,000 to now £350,000 under the new rules. So all sounds good. What's the problem? Well, here's the problem. It's the fact that it's not actually law yet. So we've passed the date, 6th of April 2023, when the announcement was made that these changes would come into effect from, uh, into effect from but unfortunately, uh, it hasn't actually gone through to royal assent. It hasn't actually been passed into law yet. Uh, so I can, if, if you look at the um, sort of timeline here, you can see it's got to get all the way across the right-hand side of the final stage to royal assent, whereas it's still in committee stage at the moment, at the time of recording this in uh, late in mid-April 2023. So it's got quite a way to go. It's still in the Commons, hasn't got to the House of Lords yet, so uh, plenty to do. And here we are with the new rules in place, allegedly, um, but it's not actually have got the force of law. So um, we don't know be enshrined. Royal Assent's normally in July, uh, so July 2023. So we've got this kind of hiatus now between uh, the current date, 6th of April 2023, when it's meant to come in, and July uh, so, you know, here is the kind of, it is going through and you can see, you know, these are the provisions, the changes you can see through the sections there. Uh, that's where it's all in the finance bill that's passing through the commons at the moment, but we're not there yet. Um, so what happens? What do we do in the meantime? Well, we understand uh, from HMRC that the changes will apply. So they're acting on the basis that it, it kind of is sort of in inverted commas, a notional law. Um, but they can't actually do all the paperwork yet, and on, more on that in a second. Um, but you've got to say there still is a risk, but until it actually goes through and it is enshrined in law, you know, it, it might not happen. I mean, I think it's a 99.9% .9 chance it's going to go through, but it's not law yet. Uh, so what can you do? I mean, what we understand is the case now is HMRC will not grant advance assurance for applications which are over £150,000. So they won't grant you the £250,000 that kind of should be allowable until July 2023, until it's got the force of law. They also will not issue compliance statements for the investors for more than the £150,000. Uh, that was the kind of the old rules. So kind of it was stuck in this kind of middle ground. So they basically what they have to do is they're going to have to do a, a backtracking once it gets into, uh, has the force of law in July, hopefully. So the compliance statements, I'll come to the second, will have to be held back until July and then they'll be able to process them. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so what do we do? So if you, basically, if you for advanced short purposes, if you think you need more than one hundred fifty thousand pounds, just the easiest way to do it at the moment is just to go for the dual application and just do which we commonly do anyway, is go for both SEIS and EIS. So say you want two hundred fifty grand, just say in the application, we're going to go uh, just two hundred fifty thousand pound and ask for both, and therefore HMRC will go ahead and just grant the assurance. And if it comes to it, in the worst case scenario, if you have to just use £150,000 as SES and the remainder as EIS, at least you've got advance assurance for both. Um, and also hold back, uh, you know, on once you issue a single share under EIS, you can't then issue any shares under SES. So if it's possible to sort of manage the process here, you want to hold back on uh, issuing any EIS shares if possible. Um, also hold back your SES1 forms I mentioned earlier. So that's the compliance form so to get the certificates to the investors. So if they're not going to process it until July, so just um, the HMRC is probably have a massive backlog, no doubt, which could probably be problematic, but we'll have to deal with that at the time. But in any case, you know, normally you've got to sort of spend 70% of the cash before you can actually go forward uh, and put the application in, or if you've been trading for more than two years. Um, but uh, again, it's getting a bit of a headache, and I suspect the problem is July, August, September, 
you can imagine they're going to be absolutely snowed under. So that's where we are at the moment. We've got this kind of difficult situation at the moment where um, we are left in hiatus until it has water sent, until it actually goes through into law. But hopefully that makes sense and gives you a bit of a steer on what to do in the meantime. My name is Steve Livingston. Thanks for watching.